isn't it if they're in effect at the third year? The third year, and that is the, the change to the tenure law and the, and the law as well. If you're rated ineffective three years, um, three consecutive years, you lose your teaching certificate. Right, you lose tenure in You lose two. tenure, yeah. And that's, that's the, the, the part that, that I hope gets changed. Obviously, ineffective teachers need to be handled you know, in, in an employment situation, but just how effective do, we, do they expect that person to be in the third year if you've told the whole world they're ineffective? Right. You're and that's everybody where requesting their kids not take that teacher. It's it's mm -hmm. going to be made exactly. And that's why I say we're going to work as hard as we can so that Romulus never finds themselves in that situation. And we have an evaluation tool that continues to grow and evolve with our teachers. And part of that is called the teacher assistance track. If we find a teacher needs assistance, that IDP, then they go on to the teacher assistance track, and they have a lot of resources that are not only available to them but they're in collaboration with the building principal with the curriculum director with with the the entire professional community because we recognize that we want our teachers you know if, if a teacher slips off the path and I'm not talking about probationary teachers here I'm talking about tenured teachers that have been with the district or or in a tenured scenario for many years those teachers we want to get back on track and that's why we call it the teacher assistance track um, I guess I'm struggling. <laughs> mm -hmm. So at that point, if they are three years, mm -hmm. um, they've been ineffective, what type of recourse do we as a district have um, from terminating that particular teacher? Because it sounds like we don't have a lot. They're automatically terminated. Okay. Because they've lost their, their ability to comply with the contract which is to have a certified Okay, a that was the, the part I was missing because it, it made it sound like you know, they just get a slap on the wrist, no. you get an IDP, and, and you're good to go, and you can still teach. Mm -hmm. well, okay. And, and you have to keep in mind, Rebecca was talking about <laughs> plan of improvement. Well, yeah, I mean, um, of course, but I think... Those things, those things start, ideally, before a teacher is actually issued an ineffective rating. Mm -hmm. um, and they're given very specific goals and very tight timelines, and they're monitored much more closely. Mm -hmm. um, the idea is you know, we're going to help you, uh, we're going to make sure that, you know, you know what it takes to be satisfactory or effective, and we're going to do everything we can, but, you know, you're the professional, you have to do your part, too. Mm -hmm. Do we have any um, safeguards in place that kind of, I, and I guess, <clears throat> I guess I'm trying to make it clear that, you know, if that p particular person is ineffective, then they're gone. Um, so what types of safeguards do we have in place that kind of protect us and protect them as an employee? Um, what, or sh maybe I should be asking, can we get like an example of an evaluation piece mm -hmm. that you actually use to evaluate that particular teacher? Mm -hmm. So then that way it kind of gives us an idea of what our expectations are as a district on for that particular employee. Um, and then that way, too, um, if, here go, God forbid that we ever found ourselves in that scenario, and I would think that we are a lot more proactive not to be in that scenario, but if we did, um, something that the board could be able to explain to those parents if, indeed, that person um, had to be put on that probationary mm -hmm. track. So, so I just want to make sure I understand. What you're looking for is you'd like to see an example yeah. of what the teacher assistance track looks like. Yeah. What, what that, what, what it would look like um, as we were helping the teacher through that and the teacher was helping themselves through that. You'd exactly. like the example so that you can talk to the community when they say, you know, Ms. Jones was, you know, rated ineffective, I heard through the grapevine. Do you know right. what's happening? And you'll be able to talk to, these are, the, these are the, the materials, these are the supplies, these are the interventions, if you will, that the district puts in exactly. place for, for yes. those teachers exactly. and assistants. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Pick. Mm -hmm. So the last thing, go, back, go to the last page. Back. The back. There's two, two quick sections, and I probably should have led with this because we've had a nice discussion about teacher effectiveness. Um, teacher and administrators, the revised school code says that the performance eval system shall assign an effectiveness rating to each teacher of highly effective, effective, minimally effective, or ineffective. That's the, the revised school code language. So at the end of this school year, we have to report one of those labels 
for every single teacher in our district. We have to report one of those labels for every single principal and assistant principal in our district. Every, anybody who has anything to do with instruction. Now we've been ramping and preparing for this you for know, for, for a while now. <laughs> yeah. So we've been working diligently with the teachers and the teachers have been working really hard. There's lots of good, good conversations about student growth going on in our, in our learning communities. But at the end of this year, our Romulus Community Schools Professional Growth Plan has um, the language that we use is exceeds goals, meets goals, progressing towards goals, and does not meet goals. That has, I put a little crosswalk in there for you just so that you can see what that, what that equates to in the state language. Okay. And then the last thing is our live data where we're at right now. Here's a little snapshot of the number of teachers and overall percentage of teachers on the new teacher evaluation plan. Currently we have 12 teachers that are on the new teacher plan. I've also indicated years one, two, and three. Um, teachers that were hired prior to July 11th, 2000, July 19th, 2011, they are on a four-year probationary track. Okay. <laughs> teachers hired after that are on a five-year. Right now, uh, th these are the years that the teachers are on. So I have two one-year teacher, first-year teachers, eight second-year teachers, and three second-year teachers. And then for our professional growth plan, those are our tenured teachers in, in, in good instructional standing, as we call that. They're not in need of teacher assistance. They're, they're humming along in their, in their, um, in their um, instruction. They're on the professional growth plan. That's the majority. You see we have 175 or 92 percent of our teachers are on that plan. And then we have four teachers currently that are on an IDP. That's um, about 2 percent of our overall teacher population. Um, one of them is, uh, has, has, is this is the two, two of those teachers, this is the first year on a plan, and two of those teachers, this is the second year on a plan. So you can see that the, that, will, that is being addressed through HR and through the buildings as well. Okay. Question? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, you said this was real time. Is this prior to this year's evaluations being put in the system, or is this as of like March 10th? March 10th. March 5th. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I when I ran the numbers. I don't mean this to sound sarcastic or mm -hmm. as harsh as it's going to, and I'm certainly not trying to bash our teachers. Mm -hmm. If we have 92 percent that quote are either effective or highly effective, how did our MEEP scores tank? I don't like drawing the direct correlation there because mm -hmm. I've stated many times the MEEP should be printed on Sherman. Mm -hmm. But sorry. Um, but it's hard for me to, to equate that with 92% of our teachers being effective or highly effective because well, obviously something's broken somewhere. Let me go back one more step. This is the first year at the end of this school year, June 1st, is when we will report an effectiveness rating for teachers. So this is the first year that we are, we are tying our student growth data to our professional growth. So, so I, I understand what you're saying, you know, 92% of our teachers, you would think that that would be an automatic correlation to, you know, our, our high, high, high test scores and, and, um, and that. We have no teachers that have an effectiveness rating at this point. Okay. There's, there's no teachers. So that, it's kind of apples to oranges at this point until, until that we, comes out. Exactly. Okay. Now, <clears throat> but you need to understand, too, that the MEEP is only um, one part. Oh, I understand. Of what goes into the effectiveness rating, we would hate to judge a teacher um, at the end of the year based on something that happened in one day. But we behind this table don't. Parents do, mm -hmm. and but, that's our struggle. And again, the, as far as the MEEP scores, you know, the MEEP scores didn't really tank. Okay, the the system changed. Um, you know, we used to assess uh, uh, and give, you know, give feedback to the community about. Um, who matter who exceeded stu uh, state standards now it's who's ready who's on track for college readiness so the bar got a lot higher but um, one of the things that Paula shared with the board um, recently was that we're still growing significantly in reading we need to roll up our sleeves a little hard a little more in math but uh, we're still making progress in the MEEP and um, we have every reason to believe that our buildings will make adequate yearly progress this year based on MEEP data okay. so because we were just talking a little bit about data, um, I'm just going to throw out there that our teachers are working hard at, at looking at data 
but not just one source of data. So we're looking at MEEP data, we're looking at NWEA data, we're looking at pre and post test data, we're looking at building formative assessments and showing student growth over time. Those are the types of the, the value add that we can show. We have very effective teachers and they are showing one plus years of instruction or growth for one year of instruction. Those are the things that our professional growth plan is working on, um, both individually with the teachers and then collectively as the buildings and the overall district. I, I totally agree. Um, and this, I guess, is, is somewhat philosophical in nature as well, but I would really like to see us and every other school district use longitudinal data mm -hmm. instead of these standardized snapshots that are most times based on post-mortem data and post-mortem curriculum. Well, it's interesting, too, that you bring that up, Mr. McLaughlin, because because part of the legislation is very specific when it comes to te rank ranking teachers' effectiveness on data, student growth data. It asks that you look at no less than three years over time, three years of, of data student over student. time. Yes. Yep. So now how we're going to do that, we're still working that out, and the state is working very hard. They've, they're putting systems in place as well. Um, something called the te teacher student data link is what allows us to link those, those teachers to students over time. Um, we just rolled that out, we meaning the state just rolled that out this year, and we're implementing that as well. Thank you. Uh, are the administrators on a similar evaluation plan yes they are okay yes they are they have they've been administrators have been annually evaluating for a long time <laughs> 2007 okay. yeah um, and we're incorporating the same um, um, the same attributes into the administrator evaluation with regard to effectiveness um, because they will also receive the effectiveness ratings as well now that part's still a work in progress isn't it correct with the administrators they're they're revi because they're revising our um, the system that we adopted in 2007 to include uh, student test data. Yep. Okay. And it would be a, a larger picture for them as far as their whole building? There's this building wide. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any additional questions? Okay. All right. Brings us to item six, board policy review. And you all have a nice fat notebook in mm -hmm. front of you. Um, and that notebook um, contains 37 policy revisions. Um, many of those are necessitated by recent legislation. Some of them are recommendations either from the Michigan Association of School Boards or from NEOLA, the other policy um, creating organization. Um, it stands for Northeast Ohio Legal Association, but it's a national company used by school districts all over the country. Um, and what happens is um, uh, every now and then, besides uh, legislative changes like we've been seeing here in Michigan, every now and then there's a court case that, um, that comes, to, comes to light where a district doesn't have a policy on something, the district errs and bad things happen as a result of that. So a policy organization, one of the things that we pay for when we pay that annual service fee is for them to update us periodically on things. Um, our process is we, um, we tend to batch policy changes. We try to do it once a year. We don't always get to it, if, you know, depending on, this, on the urgency of the policy changes. We knew that um, there was going to be a lot of legislation this year. Um, however, some of the legislation that happened last year um, really needed clarity. Uh, before we could adopt a policy change. So we've been communicating with MASB and NEOLA pretty much all year. Uh, we're now at a point, though, where we're comfortable uh, bringing this policy to the board for review. Um, however, um, our, um, our procedures have changed a little bit in that we used to have a policy committee that kind of was the first filter for the whole board. Now we're operating under a committee of the whole. Um, so what I wanted to do, and some of you uh, we're not on the board the last time we looked at um, policy adoption and policy change. So I thought it would be prudent for us to, uh, let me just kind of walk you through the notebook and then talk about the procedure that we'd like everybody to use. And of course, this is the board's prerogative. It's the board's policy, not, not the administration's policy. So um, we can certainly amend the procedure at the board's pleasure. Um, if you open up your notebook, um, let me just orient you a little bit in the left-hand pocket is current policy. Um, you've got a stack of papers there. Um, this is our current policy that is um, 
ready for revision. And again, it's ready for revision based on changes in the law or recommendations from either the administration. Uh, we have 